Straight ahead on CCX News, a bus driver shortage and the local impact. See what it means for some metro transit routes here in the northwest suburbs. Plus, bonding with the badge. Kids and police in Robbinsdale join forces thanks to America's pastime. But first, the poll about a pool. What a Brooklyn Park survey says about a possible new aquatics facility in that city. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Come November, Brooklyn Park voters could be asked to support a multi-million dollar reinvestment in the park system. Alexandra Renslow joins us now with more. Shannon, Brooklyn Park voters may be asked for money to improve the existing parks and facilities, but that referendum question might not include a much talked about new aquatic facility. The community said very strongly that they would recommend some type of a park bond referendum that would range between 18 and 26 million. That would include some very specific projects. A recent poll of 400 Brooklyn Park residents likely to vote in November shows that more than 70% would support a referendum question that would provide $18 million over the next 20 years for redeveloping neighborhood parks, improving trails, and updating existing parks and special use facilities. The poll also asked voters if they would support an additional referendum question asking for $23.6 million to build a new aquatics facility. However, that question got lukewarm support with around 50% saying they might approve it. The city council now faces an August 24th deadline on whether to put a park bond referendum question or questions on the November ballot. The current 20-year park bond from 1997 sunsets next year. I fear that we will again not get an aquatics facility if we put it on the ballot and don't give the whole story. What is the true impact that a facility could have? And so where I'm at is not putting it on the ballot, an aquatics facility at all, working on the partnerships and really firming up one or two partners that can help us get an aquatics facility if the council decides not to put that aquatics facility question on the November ballot, it doesn't mean the end for a new pool. The city has a potential partner it hasn't named yet that it could move forward for funding on aquatics facility. Meantime, if the council approves putting that $18 million park bond question on the November ballot, and it passes, it would mean a 2% property tax rate increase for homeowners. Shannon? All right, thank you, Alex. Metro Transit bus service in the Northwest Metro is being scaled back due to a shortage of drivers. Right now we've got 1,500 operators, about that. We're about 90 operators short of where we want to be. Suspended service started Tuesday morning. In our area, some riders in Brooklyn Park will have to make alternate plans. There's a change to Route 766. The southbound trip that leaves the Richardson Park and Ride at 7.07 in the morning is dropped. And the Route 768 southbound trip that leaves the Noble Park and Ride at 7.18 a.m. is also gone. Metro bus transit officials say the suspended service impacts about 1% of daily bus trips. In the last couple of weeks, last few weeks, we've had situations where we've had to alert riders, you know, the bus hasn't, isn't going to make its trip today. And sometimes that notification has come while they're already at the bus stop. And that's just not sustainable. Metro Transit says they are actively recruiting drivers. The starting salary is around 20 bucks an hour. Meanwhile, they are encouraging riders to check for alerts, and they say some state fair bus service will also be suspended. Authorities have identified the woman who was struck by a car last week in Brooklyn Center and later died. She's identified as 78-year-old Glenda Jordan of Brooklyn Center. The incident happened at an intersection a short distance from her home. The driver is cooperating with police and it's unclear if any charges will be filed. A local organization wants to remind people about how to properly dispose of unused medications. Partnership for Change has launched a campaign to let people know about the 31 medicine drop boxes spread throughout Hennepin County. The Maple Grove Police Department is one of the places where people can go to to dispose of their unused prescription drugs. It's an easy way to prevent medicine misuse and abuse. 
It is really important for community members to play a part. They have power in prevention and there's an opioid epidemic going on, an opioid crisis, and one of the ways that they can actually be involved and make a difference is by using the disposal boxes and getting rid of their medications, getting them out of their homes. For a full list of all the medication drop-off sites, you can go to partnershipforchange.org. Hennepin County is challenging people to reduce their garbage output. It's a program called the Zero Waste Challenge. 50 households will participate by trying to reduce as much trash as possible. Through the challenge, the county hopes to learn what stands in the way of people reducing their trash. People in the Zero Waste Challenge will get coaching from experts on how to decrease what they throw away, things like composting, composting food instead of trashing it. County officials say they know it's almost impossible to reduce waste output to zero, and that's okay, as long as people are trying to lower it as much as possible. You want to feel good about your contribution to the earth, I think um, reducing your waste is a really easy way to do that. The challenge begins this September, so if you'd like to participate, check the Zero Waste Challenge page on Hennepin County's website. We are learning more about the candidates running for Hennepin County Commissioner in District 2, and that seat includes Golden Valley and the southeast part of Plymouth. During a forum Monday night hosted by the League of Women Voters, the candidates were asked how they would address the affordable housing issue. Income has wide disparities across Hennepin County and even here in District 2, stretching from, from Plymouth through Golden Valley, Medicine Lake, the north side, northeast of St. Anthony Village. There are disparities right here in District 2 that we can be focusing on. One of the things that I think that the way that you need to begin to, to address it is beginning to make sure that people have jobs, they have viable incomes, and they're able to they're able to rent or and or buy in the neighborhoods in which they choose to live in. I think it's really important that the city, the cities in Hennepin County are encouraged to build more affordable housing for um, their residents and for folks who want to work and who want to live in those communities. I think that county need to ensure, have a, a regulation uh, ensuring banks and financial institutions do not deny loans for minority communities. Cities need to work with developers as partners and find ways to, to fund affordable housing projects. It's a supply problem and there needs to be more uh, market rate, there just needs to be more uh, supply in the marketplace. The August 14th primary will whittle down five candidates to two. And you can see the candidate forum in its entirety on our website, ccxmedia.org. Baseball is known as America's pastime, but as our Meredith Hackler reports, one organization is using the sport to bring police officers and local youth closer together. My man. Oh. Badges and baseball. The two aren't something that typically go together. And you want to hold it kind of easy. But Tuesday in Robbinsdale. I'm going to line up my door knocking knuckles, right? The pair went hand in hand. So this program is a foundation that I wanted to do is bring baseball and kids together in badges. So the idea of it was if we had the kids go to a major league baseball game in that town along with a clinic the next day. Um, it's, it's a chance for the officers and kids to learn how to hit and play and work together with each other. For 16 years, the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation has been bringing police and kids together across the United States with their badges for baseball tour. These kinds of activities here allow the police officers to really let their guard down a little bit to really interact with the kids and be that, that mentor. Balls on the cones! Balls on the cones! While fun and games aren't typically a part of a police officer's day, they say events like this there you go. help kids see police for more than their badge and gun. Taking away some of the fear of law enforcement and seeing police officers as not just this is an officer, it's a person and it's somebody that they can have those positive interactions with. So if somebody needs help from the police. The program puts officers in a different light and allows them to create relationships with kids in their community. It's a lot like hanging out with my niece and nephews and playing games and having that sort of interaction versus the other part of law enforcement, which is responding to calls and medicals and all that. While also fostering positive memories for both kids and cops. There is always a positive feeling coming out of this and I think that just that if one of them can remember that if they ever get in a, a situation that's the impact that we want to have. In Robbinsdale, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. And Robbinsdale was the last stop on this year's Badges for Baseball Tour.
Still ahead on CCX News, we'll take you to the park everyone's been talking about this summer. Plus, we catch up with a former Maple Grove High School football star as he shoots for a spot on the Minnesota Vikings roster. But first, a chance of rain moves in and out Wednesday morning with highs hanging out in the low 70s. Welcome back. This week in Backyard Getaways, it's all about playtime for the kids. There are many cool playgrounds in the Northwest Metro to choose from, and Eric Nelson found a few that are very unique to our area. It's a hard workout if you make it a hard workout. Our playground profile begins at Chopper Park in Golden Valley. Kids gravitate here because of the obstacle course, which is the first of its kind in Minnesota. Most parks don't have this kind of stuff. This all-inclusive course is a huge draw and makes Shopper Park a unique spot. Fun! It's our first time here and the kids love the timer, they love the racetrack, they figured it out really quick. Pretty strong, pretty strong. The kids get plenty of fresh air, sunshine and cardio and the parents are all on board with that. We try and run them hard and play hard in the summer to offset the cold months here in Minnesota. This time I'm going to try jumping. Shopper Park is part of a border state co-op, proving that Minnesota and Wisconsin actually can play nice together. We've seen friends come here, we've seen pictures, we just had it on our list of things to get check out this summer. Our next stop on the playground tour is Central Park in Maple Grove. This place is a magnet. It has something for everyone. Central Park perks include a climbing wall, a 24-foot tower, slides, swings, and a rubberized surface. The kids really love all the different kind of equipment of it. Lots of different things to do. So they also have a splash pad as well, which the kids really enjoy. Central Park has a large footprint and can absorb the big crowds that typically show up on a gorgeous summer day. Not like the kids have to wait super long to get on any kind of equipment because there's just so many different pieces and things to do. This park is so popular go, go. that Suzanne Brandt drove 15 miles from New Brighton so her son Ethan could have some fun in the sun. He's pretty excited. A lot of fun for him to climb and jump on different things and slide down different slides. For Backyard Getaways, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Looks like fun. Both Central and Shopper Park also have trails that are near the playgrounds, too. Still ahead, a sale of all sales benefiting a Brooklyn Park church. But first, the Minnesota State High School League formalizes plans to play some games at the new Vikings facility in Egan. John Jacobson has all the details coming up next in sports. Maple Grove's Jake Winicky is one of dozens of first-year players in the Minnesota Vikings training camp trying to earn a roster spot. Since he signed with the Vikings as an undrafted free agent three months ago, it's been all football for the 23-year-old rookie wide receiver. Oh, it's been so much fun just kind of getting the, the whole team out here, uh, training camp with the fans and the stands, and um, just all the, all the team coming together has been pretty fun. You had rookie mini camp, and now you have this. How much is your head kind of swimming trying to take in all the information <laughs> you need to take in to be able to make this team? Definitely. It's a lot of information and a lot going through your head. Uh, it's kind of football all day, and even when you're sleeping, you're dreaming about it, thinking about it. So um, it's, it's a lot, but it was good to be here early for the OTAs and the mini camp in the spring. Really got the playbook um, and throughout the summer studying, and, and now, uh, kind of hit the ground rolling during training camp. You talked about it when we talked to you back in April that the comparisons with Adam Thielen, undrafted guy. Have you heard that more from from now your teammates too? <laughs> no, I, I haven't heard it too much here. Um, I don't think I've I've got to that level yet. But I mean, just what he's done is just amazing, I and mean, I have so much respect for him. There's everything that he went through to get to where he's at now, and just con what he continues to do to to be where he wants to be. And I mean, he's just such a great man, such a hard worker, great leader, such a fun guy to learn from in the locker room. Um, so I'm just I'm just blessed to to have him. You grew up as a Vikings fan. How do you kind of separate yourself from that now that like you can't be awestruck by any of these guys you're going up against every day? Definitely. I mean, yeah, it's easy to look around and people I've been watching for five, ten years um, and now I'm on their team. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of just got to wake up and be like, OK, I'm, I'm on the Vikings now. I'm not just, I'm not just watching, uh, watching them anymore. In your mind, what do you need to do to make this team? Uh, just focus on uh, controlling what I can control. Uh, go work as hard as I can. My attitude is uh, doing everything I can do, just living in the present um, and working as hard as I can. 
Have you had friends and family come out to, to practices that you know? Yeah, I have. It's, it's been pretty cool to, to see my mom and my fiance came and my dad's coming um, later this week and it's just pretty special. Got a couple friends that have came from people from South Dakota that has came. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to see people text me, hey, I'm going to be at practice and different things. So, uh, it's, it's been pretty amazing. I know you don't have anything to compare it to because you were never in Mankato as, as a player, but what's this facility like? It's it's pretty special. I mean, just looking around, and I mean, I hear from the other guys kind of what it was like at Winter Park or what, what it was like at Mankato. And obviously, I just came here. I was just blessed to, to have this right away. Uh, everything you need here, just the, all the facilities, the field, I mean, the cafeteria. I mean, it's just amazing. Saturday evening, the Vikings will host a night practice for fans at the new TCO Stadium in Egan. Their first preseason game is August 11th at Denver. Also today at training camp, the Minnesota State High School League and the Vikings formally announced their plans to hold high school games at the Vikings complex. The TCO Performance Center at the new Vikings headquarters in Egan will host two regular season games and three playoff games this fall. Players and coaches from participating teams like Phil North, Egan, Farmington and Prior Lake were on hand for the announcement. The 6500 seat stadium should be an ideal sized venue for high school games. And I've had many, many, many days internally here in meetings and at night and in the morning that we've all talked about how important high school football is here in the state of Minnesota and having a dream of seeing those young players be able to run out on the field and play under the lights here at Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center. Friday nights are special in Minnesota. The state of Minnesota is uh, on any given Friday night across the state celebrating football. And I'm not sure there's a, a, a better community driven activity. Football brings communities together on Friday nights and we're, we're really looking forward to bringing some of those communities together here this year, as Kevin mentioned, the communities that we'll be visiting. The plan is to add more high school games in the coming seasons, maybe even a weekly small college football game or youth football game could be held there in the future as well. That is it for sports. We're back with more in just a moment. And finally, volunteers say you won't believe it until you see it. Family of God Lutheran Church in Brooklyn Park has held this garage sale for more than three decades. Volunteers have been working on tagging and pricing items for days. Organizers estimate that last year more than a thousand people came through the doors for the three day sale. It's not part of our general fund. We use it for outreach. And one of the big things that we fund, we do backpacks for Edenbrook Elementary, just north of the church. And we hand out food to families that need a little help on the weekend with their um, food um, budget. Sale kicks off at 5 p.m. on Wednesday with a pre-sale that costs $3 to get in. The sale continues on Thursday and Friday and wraps up at noon on Saturday. And like she mentioned, money raised goes right back into the community. So go check it out. That's all the time we have for now. We'll see you back here on Wednesday.